you know, I get asked a lot, what kind of telescope should I buy? And my answer is, gee, I don't know. I'm looking to buy a car. What kind of car should I buy? <laughs> and the point is that telescopes are a very individual kind of purchase, so you need to think about what you want to do with it. Do you want to take photographs? Do you want to throw it in the trunk of your car and go camping with it? Uh, do you want to make, you know, discover comets with it? All of those things work into it. I think a lot of us have an impression of what a telescope should look like, and it's probably something like this. A long skinny tube with a lens at one end, an eyepiece at the other, much as Galileo used a few hundred years ago, on a nice wooden tripod or maybe a metal tripod. These still exist, but a lot of telescopes are very different now. You can still buy nice telescopes like this. Usually the tubes are a little bit shorter. These are called refractors because they use a lens at one end to uh, collect and, and uh, concentrate the light. And then the eyepiece at the other end is what actually does the magnifications. So I'm going to take you through the four things you should look for for a telescope. First is the optics. We talked about this being a refractor. I'm going to move this out of the way because while it's a lovely little telescope, it's probably not the one that I would recommend for you as a first timer. Another kind of telescope is this called a reflector. And it's called a reflector because it's got a mirror at the back end that collects and concentrates the light. And again, there's an eyepiece here to do that. This is, in fact, the telescope we're going to be giving away tonight. So uh, keep an eye on this one. And if I start to walk out with it, stop me. <laughs> so this is a telescope uh, that is a great beginner telescope. It's very lightweight. Uh, you can see it's very short. It moves much like a tripod, side to side and up and down. Um, so we have a refractor telescope, a reflector. The third type of telescope I didn't bring tonight is what you might call a combination of those two. It uses both mirrors and lenses to collect the light. They tend to be a little bit more expensive to start with, so I didn't bring one of those for you tonight. Now, the thing about these reflectors, you know, people say, well, I need the most magnification possible. Uh-uh. It's really about the diameter of the tube. The bigger the diameter, the more light you're going to be able to collect. And just for comparison, I brought a big brother of this one. You notice the tubes are the same diameter, right? A telescope's magnifying power depends in part on the focal length, how long it takes the light to come to a focus. So even though these have exactly the same diameter mirrors in them, this telescope with the same eyepiece will magnify twice as much as this one. All right? So again, this is a matter of personal taste. Do you want to just like maybe just view the moon and uh, some star clusters? Then a small one might be good for you. If you want to do something that's a little bit more uh, ambitious, you want to go after some planets and uh, spot their moons, then this might be the one for you. I have one other little trick here I want to show you. And this is where I was talking about make sure it's the right one for you. This is uh, produced by a group called Astronomers Without Borders. And you notice it's a little bit bigger around, but this is a telescope with a secret. Okay? This is a telescope. In two minutes, I can break this apart with one screwdriver and fit it in a carry-on case. Right? This is a beautiful little telescope. All of these that I've shown you are about $200 a piece. This, telescopes do not have to be expensive in order to be good. So that's about the optics. Now I want to talk a little bit about the mounts. As I mentioned, this is a mount that swivels side to side, up and down. You notice there are no motors on this. The nice thing about these telescopes, especially for kids, is that they're practically bulletproof. You almost can't break them. Well, almost, right? And I see, uh, 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 not here. OK, <clears throat> a second kind of mount that you'll see often is what's called an equatorial mount. And in this case, it's, it's important. You notice it's kind of cockeyed here. One of these axes needs to point to Polaris, the North Star. And there's a reason for that. It makes it a little bit simpler for the telescope to track, although it doesn't look like it here. Honestly, I do not recommend an equatorial mount for a very first telescope unless you're really uh, planning to get into it seriously. They're just a little bit too complicated, especially if you have young kids. Then the third type of mount, which has made a really big headway just recently, is what's called computerized mounts. Or the very first ones were called go-to telescopes because literally there was a button on the keypad that said go-to. Right? Now you haven't noticed, but right now it's been quietly tracking the sky, such as it can see here. It comes with a GPS module, so it knows where it is on the Earth. You need about five minutes to set these up. 
Uh, all of the major manufacturers of telescopes produce ones like this. This happens to be from a company in, here in the area called uh, iOptron, which is based in Woburn. And uh, so with just a few, a few clicks here on the keypad, I'm going to have it go find the planet Venus. And it told me that it hasn't risen yet. So I have to go back and find another planet. Let's find the planet <laughs> Jupiter. There we go. And so this is a really nice way. You know, when these were first introduced, a lot of people poo-pooed them because they, in a way, made stargazing too easy. But for most people who live in a city, I actually like this uh, because, you know, a lot of us suffer from so much light pollution that we couldn't find the, the whatever we're looking for just by looking through a finder scope at the sky. So a telescope like this has an advantage for a beginner. Now, I will tell you, it takes a little bit of knowledge to understand it, but I don't think it's anything you can't handle. So that's the mounts, and that's the, uh, the optics. The third thing I want to talk about are the eyepieces themselves, okay? Now, imagine if you bought a car, a brand new car, and it came with a beautiful set of, uh, oh, Michelin tires on it, and you eventually used that car and then sold the car, but you kept the tires and put the tires on your next car because you loved them so much. That's what eyepieces are like. They're very um, uh, interchangeable between telescopes. Usually when you buy a new telescope, you'll get one or two simple eyepieces uh, that will, will start you off. And these eyepieces have little numbers on the side, and it's counterintuitive, but the lower the number, the more it magnifies. Okay? The lower the number, the more it magnifies. If you see a telescope that's advertising itself as being able to, uh, say, magnify 500 times, and it's not talking about the quality of its optics, run for the exits. Because most telescopes cannot handle much more than two or 300 power magnification. It gets all blurry and mushy, and it's very unsatisfying that way. So those are the eyepieces. Now, when you, when you go, you will not find a lot of these telescopes in a store. Uh, a lot of these you'll have to think about ordering online. The fourth and final thing I want to tell you about is um, the, the, uh, um, the fact that these telescopes are built for you. In other words, you need, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, you need something that is going to be suitable for you. It doesn't do you any good, right, to buy a, a really expensive telescope. And believe me, telescopes are far, can be far more expensive than this. But you need to have it suitable for you. And the other thing I want to mention is that you get what you pay for in a telescope. If uh, some of you have purchased a telescope already and um, you, say, bought it at a department store and, say, paid $70 for it, you might think about returning that one and getting one of these telescopes before they get opened on, uh, on the holiday mornings. Because you know what? It doesn't do you any good to buy a telescope that's going to frustrate you because it's so hard to use. All of these telescopes here are pretty reasonably priced. Um, none of them, the, these basic ones here that don't have the um, uh, motors in them uh, don't cost more than about $250. Even this one uh, costs about $400 with the computer built in. The nice thing is that it's got this little saddle here. A lot of these telescopes are interchangeable. You can move them from, from mount to mount. So it's all good. The last thing I want to leave you with is uh, a lot of people end up buying telescopes and actually don't know anything about them. Right? Most of you, when you go out to buy a car, or buy furniture or something like that, you have an idea of what it is that you want. Telescopes is like uncharted territory for a lot of people. So here's a couple of guidelines I want to mention just in case you're buying one uh, this time of year. If you're buying one for your family, right, and for the whole family, and you all want to use it, then that's great. And, you know, a good telescope can last you a lifetime, really, if you, if you uh, make a nice choice. Uh, I have my very first telescope that I got way too many years ago. And along the way, I've picked up a number of these small telescopes like this. And uh, I use them all the time. It's, it's important to find a telescope that is going to be right for you to use. For your family, if you have children that are, say, uh, five and six or older, 
uh, and you're working with them at the telescope, that's a good age to get started with telescopes because when they look in the eyepiece, they can have an appreciation of what you're actually looking at. Uh, at the observatory where I, where I teach, uh, in addition to working at Sky and Telescope, we sometimes get people who bring like their, their toddlers up to the eyepiece and there's just no comprehension there. If, on the other hand, you're buying a telescope for a child, and you're basically going to stand back and let the child take care of that, uh, then, then I want you to think about like seven, eight as being the sort of minimum age. The child needs to be able to handle it, right, and, uh, and be able to carry it around. The nice thing about the telescopes that I'm showing you here is, as I said, they're really bulletproof. They're pretty hard to, uh, to break. And so that is the key to success. Now, the thing is, once you buy that first telescope, you can always think about you know, moving up. Just like uh, the analogy I would use is, say you uh, buy a pair of headphones, right? Uh, uh, and you want to you know, listen to music on your iPad or your uh, smartphone or, or whatever. You, know, you can start off with a pretty inexpensive pair of headphones, and then your tastes improve. You want to hear those deep bass notes, and you want to hear those real high treble notes, and you want everything to be clear. Then you move to a more expensive pair of headphones. That's the same way with telescopes. There's always room to grow. I'm afraid to tell you this, and I hope my wife isn't watching. I've got 12 telescopes at home. <laughs> oh, 13. I, I just bought one this week. And, and I, that's a little bit overkill, but I do find uses for each one of those. And so I think you'll find that the telescope can be really a good investment for you and your family. It's great to just toss into the car. Make sure you try to find a place that's really dark outside, because uh, dark and far away from city lights, far away from light pollution, because that will improve your enjoyment quite a bit. And so uh, in closing, you know, these telescopes are all great. And there are more expensive ones you can buy. I highly recommend that you do a little window shopping. Um, kind of stay away from telescopes that are branded as uh, being by your, your favorite uh, 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 department store, your favorite magazine, or something like that. I'd be very careful to make sure that it's actually a quality telescope. You'll know it's quality. Again, you get what you pay for. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to thank you very much for your attention and turn it back over to Dave.